helped me a lot so i have uh, basically interviewed with google india thrice uh, in the last one year i got a you know, testing from the recruiter again like in on linkedin so i feel that since i'm very active on linkedin so my linkedin profile has been noticed by the recruiters so i uh, like every now and then i uh, get this mail that hey we would like to extend you an opportunity for you know sd sd one role at amazon diversity hiring is only opening the doors for women or uh, and not lowering the bar of the skill set that is required by the companies in my, in the last 6 months i've sat in so many of campus uh, process like i cannot even count so i and i've seen that many tier 3 college uh, students they are also sitting along with me so i definitely feel that the staff has been narrowed hi everyone i hope you all are doing great so i have come up with yet another amazing video in which i have a very special guest for the day she is shreya prasad she is currently pursuing her bachelor's of technology in igdtuw delhi and in this video i have discussed with her six important interview experiences that she had off campus with some of the amazing companies all over the world so when i name these companies so they are google india bloomberg london intuit expedia group and a lot of other companies and she is currently doing her internship at bny milan and she is an incoming software engineer at intuit so you can think how uh, important this conversation would be for somebody who is looking for to prepare for these off campus opportunities and would be able to know how to apply to these off campus opportunities apart from that we have discussed about her experiences as a github campus expert and also some of the resume tips on to how you can prepare your resume to get it shortlisted for different companies so this is going to be really amazing and if you are looking forward to apply to off campus opportunities so do watch this video till the end and if you are watching this video till now so press the like button and share it with your friends do let me know in the comment section if you have any feedbacks for me so so let's see this amazing conversation with shreya prasad Thank you so much, Shreya, for accepting the invitation and coming here. Hey, everyone. Today, I have with me Shreya Prasad. She is a final year undergraduate at IGDQW Delhi. So, we'll talk about her amazing journey throughout the college. A lot of companies she has interviewed with uh, off campus. When we talk about these companies like Google India, Bloomberg, Intuit, Amazon, Adobe. So, like a lot of experiences she has of interviewing with these companies. And this amazing conversation will be like very enjoyable, and you will be getting to know more about uh, how to crack these company, and it would be a great learning experience for all of you. But before starting with today's uh, conversation, let's have a brief introduction of Shreya. uh so thank you ash for inviting me to your wonderful podcast uh so hey everyone my name is shreya basad and as i should describe i am a final year cc undergrad from igdtw uh, i am also working as a software engineer intern at bain by melon and i am also a get up campus expert and a gsoft mentor at socketos great so that defines you completely like a lot of things are there in your intro so it it takes you a lot of time to introduce yourself so we will we'll discuss a lot of things in this uh, uh, conversation as we go ahead but before moving upon to the actual processes for these off campus companies i would like to know more about your college your college life and uh, you have been a part of a lot of communities so how those communities contributed to your growth as well as uh, uh, your uh, career opportunities right uh, so to be very honest i did not spend much time in college so most of my time was spent in extracurricular activities like community activities then attending conferences or you know uh, attending uh, like uh, classes at coding blocks or web coding so a lot of time was spent outside to be uh, to be really honest and uh, i was involved in communities like microsoft learn student ambassador or uh, get up campus expert and major legal hacking or mlh so uh, my interest uh, was developed in these communities because uh, i met some people who were into these uh, communities and they were doing really great and uh, they were really great public speakers to be honest and when i joined college uh, my public speaking skills were not so great and i used to get stage fright so that was one main motivation for me to join communities so to Uh, all these uh, technical programs i was able to overcome my stage fright and met some really great developers and it also improved my technical writing skills my public speaking skills uh, it improved my net uh, networking ability and it also opened doors to many scholarships and many opportunities and this is how i also got my first internship as well and community being in a community 
has been one of the greatest experiences in my college life because uh, you know whenever you achieve something your achievements are celebrated by the community and you know when you are surrounded by people who are always learning something always you know are uh, doing something so you are also you know uh, like you are inspired by them and you are always you know motivated to put your best foot forward so uh, as of now like uh, in communities uh, i'm active i'm actively uh, a part of the campus expert community and being a campus expert pro uh, has opened a lot of uh, opportunities for me so i i now have uh, the op uh, like the privilege to you know work with the github docs team uh, on their uh, on the github docs project and i'm also part of the github education stream team the team which is handling the twitch handle of github education so i met so as you can see i got the opportunity to meet a lot of amazing people it has opened a lot of you know doors for me and i'm learning a lot and basically it is pushing me out of my comfort zone great 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 so uh coming up with like uh, participating in these community activities organizing hackathons talking with a lot of people taking seminars workshops so it's also a learning experience for the speaker itself like we get to know a lot of uh things from uh, people who are asking questions like a lot of good learning experience we get and as you already mentioned uh, it even helps us in career opportunities and even in sometimes like it uh, plays a part during our interviews as well like when we have to present something so our presentation skills improve quite a lot right so that's that's pretty much amazing like we'll move on to your uh, off campus opportunities like uh, the interview processes that you sat for like uh, you have been uh, interviewed at various companies like google like bloomberg london adobe uh, intuit and like a lot of companies so we'll uh, i would just like you to mention about uh, some of the important details about these companies starting from the online test what were some of the important things when we move on to the interview round and how you got to know about these opportunities and how you applied for them that's the major thing so uh, we'll start with uh, one of the companies like we'll start with google india so how did you get to know about that and what was the entire process a uh, great question ash so uh, I, in my third year i applied on their careers page uh, that was for google singapore uh, location and actually it was uh, a very random uh, thing that i did i was not actually expecting to get any kind of response so uh, I, and my resume was also not so great at that time so i applied uh, just randomly and one month one month later i got a ma mail from the recruiter that uh, my resume has been shortlisted for the phone interview so they have this phone screen around uh, where they ask rapid fire questions about your basic bsa uh, concepts and uh, after that uh, round if the if the hr is satisfied with your uh, with uh, your answers and the speed with which you are answering the questions uh, they uh, they, pro they process you further to the online technical inter rounds so in my case uh, there was one technical one telephonic round and then there were three on site rounds uh so the the whole process was completely virtual so i was unable to make it after the on sites because i missed a one interview uh, due to some optimization uh so it uh, like it really shows like uh, that google is very particular about you know uh, like each and every round like that literally noticing each and everything that you are doing so i also used to get uh, very good feedbacks from the recruiters and it really helped me a lot so i have uh, basically interviewed with google india thrice uh, in the last one year <laughs> and that this was all off campus amazing amazing so we'll move on to uh, some of the other companies that you have interviewed with like we'll talk about intuit so right. how was the interview experience at intuit and how did you apply for that uh okay so actually i signed up for their outreach program so this is a program where the in, where professionals from intuit uh, give seminars on various topics and whoever signs up for this program they can attend it so it's not uh, restricted to any college so i signed up for the program long back i don't even remember and uh, then uh, all of a sudden I, a few months ago i got a mail from the hr that um, my resume has been shortlisted for the interview so when you are applying for this outreach program you have to also send your resume 
So I did that and I cleared the online test. Uh, there were four questions. Uh, they were based on arrays, strings, uh, graphs, and then your typical DFS, BFS. So after clearing the interview round, two days uh, after two days, I received a mail that uh, I have been selected for the interview round. So there are totally two interview rounds. In first one is for 30 minutes, and the second one is for one hour. And in the first interview, uh, the interviewer discussed the solutions that I gave in the online assessment. Uh, then it was basically a mix. Like in it, in interview, the uh, like there is no particular round for DSA. They ask everything that's possible. So you have to be ready for each and every kind of question. So I was asked a DSA question. Uh, and then HR questions, uh, then my pa uh, questions on my past experiences, my projects, and uh, yeah, so that that was it for the first thirty minutes. Uh, then after uh, the first round, I immediately got a mail that I have been selected for the second round. And in the second round, it was it was lengthy, and this was a more detailed uh, interview. There were two uh, interviewers. And they asked me various questions on uh, CS fundamentals, uh, the, uh, then DSA questions, uh, then I had to explain my projects, uh, then your typical HR questions. And uh, they also are in the end, uh, since there was some time left, so they also asked me very simple design questions. Like you have to design a human body using hoops concepts. So these kind of questions and which can be easily done, like there's no need to worry about all these questions. So after so after the final round, I uh, two days later I got the mail that I have been selected for the uh, software engineering role. Great, great, great. So uh, I can see in your profile that you have also interviewed at some of the international companies, like we talk about Bloomberg London. So how right. is the process of uh, Bloomberg as it's an international company? So it's different from a process that is generally held for an Indian company, like for the Indian uh, headquarters. Um, okay, so first of all, there is no online test for Bloomberg. And secondly, they have a dedicated round for system design. So uh, in terms of DSA, uh, the questions are not very different. Uh, they just want uh, you to answer the questions quickly. Uh, you need to be very clear with your concepts because only then you will be able to answer them quickly. And they also expect you to come up with some kind of optimization in case there is some time left and if it's possible. And they are uh, like, yeah, it's pretty much similar to the Indian uh, st uh, standard. Great. So coming upon to some of the other companies, like you have also interviewed with Adobe. So how was the process at Adobe and how did you get to this opportunity? OK, uh, so actually, I uh, this was a luck, to be honest. I got the I got came to know about the test link from one of my friends. Uh, so uh, I, it was at last moment, to be honest. So uh, I got the test link. I attempted it on. It was on Hacker Uh So there were multiple. Uh, there were MCQs on all your quantitative questions, uh, your PNCs, then math, mathematic, uh, mathematical questions, and then there were two coding questions. So. Uh, yeah, so that was the other round, first round. And then after that, I got a call that I have been shortlisted for the interview round. So it happened on uh, my, uh, it was a telephonic round. And there was no video, no coding. It was just purely on telephone. And Adobe uh, conducts only one code, uh, one interview round. So after that, uh, since it uh, happened during my, uh, when I was in my third year, and I was not fully prepared, to be honest. So uh, like, I was rejected at that time. So uh, I don't uh, I don't really understand what happened since I gave all the answers, but it happens like rejections yeah. they're a part of life. Yeah, and we do uh, try to learn a lot of things from these rejections. Talking about uh, yes. some of the uh, companies, like there are a lot of companies in the list, right? So the next company that I would uh, mention is uh, Amazon. You have also interviewed at Amazon. So right. what was the process at Amazon, and like was there any specific program or something? Um, actually, uh, I got a you know, test link from the recruiter again, like in on LinkedIn. So I feel that since I'm very active on LinkedIn, so my resume is been is been noticed by the recruiters. Uh, sorry, not my resume. My LinkedIn profile has been noticed by the recruiters. So and uh, like every now and then I uh, get this mail that hey, we would like to extend you an opportunity 
for you know sd sd one role at amazon so uh, that i got the mail uh, and i got the test link and uh, it was a standard amazon test so uh, there were like two coding questions then there was a debugging round or uh, then there were you know work uh, work uh, life uh, questions uh, and Yes, yeah, so, and there were MCQs in the end. So like that was the typical coding round. And then after that, there were three uh, interview rounds. And in each round, uh, you're expected. Uh, so from me, like uh, I was asked nearly three questions. And then in the end, I was asked to be uh, like found the time, find the time complexity of some function. So uh, in every interview round, I was expected to solve at least two and maximum three questions. So they all, in my experience, they all were based on your uh, one simple question, then one medium question, or either they both will be medium questions. And their emphasis was typically on BFS, BFS, DFS. And uh, you also mentioned that you are currently interning at BNY Mellon, right? BNY Mellon. Right. Thanks. So, uh, how was the interview experience at BNY Mellon? And like, uh, let us uh, like tell us more about this uh, particular opportunity. Uh, so it was an on-campus opportunity, and uh, again, uh, there were four questions uh, to be solved in ninety minutes in the coding test. So, I felt that the coding test was on the easier part. Uh, so. I was able to uh, finish it quickly. So it was your typical uh, topological sort, or uh, then your hash map questions, and then your uh, com sorting questions. So these were these were the kind of questions that were there in the coding round. Uh, then about the interview round, there were three interview rounds. Uh, the first one was the coding round, code pair round, where I had to solve a question, uh, and I had to make sure that the test cases are passing. Then once I solved the question, uh, I was asked uh, puzzles. Uh, so your, the puzzles that can be found on Geeks for Geeks, uh, like those typical puzzles. Uh, then in the second round, uh, they asked me like, what uh, what is my favorite topic? Uh, so I said uh, DBMS. So I was asked to design a database uh, on a bank of a bank, and uh, like they, and it was since a very open ended question. So a lot of time was spent on discussing the uh, like uh, how we should structure it. Uh, what are your requirements and on the design part and then after that i was asked a few questions on uh, like the essay like design a uh, designer min stack and uh, then you know all uh, etc like all these questions were there and finally there was this hr round for 15 minutes uh, where i was asked like standard hr questions Okay. So in Bain by Mellon, basically, if you have, uh, if you, you know, you have gone through the first two rounds, it is, uh, you, you have high chances of, you know, getting selected. So the HR round is basically a formality. Great. Great. So like, yeah. uh, these are a lot of experiences, like each experience is a new learning experience, I would say. Like you get to know yeah. a lot of things and like everybody who is watching right now, they'll also be inspired by these experiences. Now coming upon to uh, a bit of controversial uh, thing, like this has been in general on social medias like LinkedIn or maybe in some comments on YouTube we see. So generally there's a hype around diversity hiring and people uh, have to face some online hate on this particular topic and like uh, the audience is a bit biased on this topic. So what's your perspective on this uh, diversity hiring that is being done by companies right now? Um, okay, so in my opinion, uh, diversity hiring is only opening the doors for women uh, and not lowering the bar of the skill set that is required by the companies. So uh, if you have select, like if a particular number of people have, uh, women have been selected for the test link or for the interview, they still have to undergo through the rigorous process and they are selected on the basis of their merit eventually. Uh, the reason why diversity hiring is important is because uh, there are next to zero female engineers at senior positions. Uh, so basically this leads to a male dominant work culture at senior level. And if there is no diversity in the company, then how are you going to bring different perspective or uh, fresh ideas or innovation? So this is why uh, diversity is important. And this is how a company thinks when they are, they are hiring and when they are you know uh, coming to your college or when they're hiring off campus. Yeah. But students are you know concerned with only about, they are concerned only whether they are being hired or not, right? 
so the biggest perception uh, that i feel in is in our society is that uh, diversity means lack of skill set that women are being given preferential treatment throughout their career irrespective of whether they are being hired through diversity programs or not so this inherently shows that society still thinks that women are less intelligent than men so that's my take on this diversity hiring yeah different people have their different perspectives so like it 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 is like people like even if you are selected to diversity hiring you have to go through the complete process all the interview rounds are conducted and like the entire process you have to go through even if you apply for it off campus or on campus but they yeah, are like the things are there we can't yeah uh, just justify anything or something so like uh, one thing more like uh, with this remote setup or remote hiring do you think the gap between tier 2 tier 3 colleges have uh, and tier 1 colleges have narrowed down and like people are more open, open to uh, new opportunities and like uh, there's no dearth of opportunities right now uh, okay so i feel that when a student enters a tier 2 or tier 3 college they already think that you know they are going to be behind other students uh, due to college plan and they form a inferiority complex before given before even giving anything a chance so even when opportunity knocks uh, to their door they are not prepared for it so uh, i feel that they cover up their lack of preparation with an excuse that they are from a lesser known college and that's why they are rejected i feel that the gap has definitely narrowed down uh, since everything has become virtual uh, but you know uh, if you have to go if you or uh, if you have to basically get an opportunity you have to be prepared right but students are not motivated enough to level up their skill set and fill their resume with great experiences which comes with time like you cannot just decide in final year like oh my god i have to study for the placements and now i have to fill it, uh, you know my resume with every great thing possible it's not going to happen in one day it takes time and therefore they are not able to make it to the next round so let's say even if they get the test link they, they because their resume is not up to the mark or they don't have that kind of required skill set they are not able to make it to the next round they need to understand that nowadays every opportunity that is knocking up to their door is almost your independent and with enough hard work they can achieve it too and college is online for everyone so the playing field has been definitely leveled so whatever opportunities that you see like even the open source uh, programs that you see that gs like gsoc like mlh fellow like linux foundation scholarship they they all they are not uh, you know given on the basis of your college right like and even in my, in the last 6 months i have sat in so many of campus uh, process like i cannot even count so i and i have seen that many tier three college students they are also sitting along with me so i definitely feel that the staff has been narrowed yeah definitely the things have been a bit different right now due to this virtual setup and there are a lot of opportunities for everybody it's just they who need to be more aware who need to be more prepared and who need to explore a bit more right so uh coming upon uh, to uh, uh, like uh when a person has multiple offers in his hand so it's uh, a bit difficult for him to decide upon like which offer to uh, prefer over another so this is the common question that i have been getting these days also like hmm. people are generally confused on to which all things uh, should be kept in mind so i just want to have your perspective on this particular question so uh, again this is a great question arsh and all, honestly even i was i was in this dilemma a few days ago so uh, the factors that i considered while choosing the offer was first of all work life balance in my first in my past internship i have of the one thing that i have learned is uh, is that if you don't have work life balance then you won't be able to focus on your work right and you, you will not be as productive as you want to be so and even in this pandemic scenario this has become even more uh, crucial so work life balance is my first priority second will be the scope of impact that you can uh, make through the product uh, through the uh, products so whichever company that you are choosing uh, just do some research like what products they are uh, you know working on and whether you feel that you will be able to contribute to that or you will be able to make some impact and learn from them 
uh thirdly domain so there are various domains uh, like you you have fintech you have retail then you have product based companies and so on so you have to understand that in which domain you want to be in at the moment so that's uh, the third uh, aspect uh then the final one will be brand value and ctc so of course brand value matters and ctc also matters because we all are basically earning like working for that yeah great i hope this people decide upon uh, tools and what all it will be considered while uh, dealing with multiple offers and choosing one among them now coming upon to one important aspect of uh, whether it's an on campus or an off campus hiring but major role it plays in the off campus hiring where people have to pass on the initial screening criteria through their resume so resume is one of the factors that becomes that plays an important role whether in the initial screening or further in the interview rounds so how has been uh, your experience with framing and curating a good resume and like uh, so like your perspective on how should we create and create a resume and some do's and don'ts on resume all right uh, so uh, if you are applying for an internship i would uh, say that personal projects uh, matter a lot and uh, you should be uh, basically have some you know uh, your open source contribution uh, competitive coding profiles uh, some community work your technical documentation skills or uh, any scholarships that you have gone any achievements you have and uh, all these things uh, you i feel in an off campus setting it's important that you first go through the job description of the job that you're applying for and then tailor your resume according to it so you have to basically it's all a matter of structuring all these points according to the job description so these are the do, do's for the internship now the do's for the full time role is uh, all, all of the points are going to be similar except that past internship experience do matter so that's how like i was able to like uh, level up my resume due to my past internship experiences and as far as the don'ts are concerned uh whenever you are adding a project just make sure that you have actually done it and not just you know cloned it from another github repository because uh, when you are adding a project you are going to uh, it is uh, very much you know uh, like uh, like required to add a link because that shows a uh, legitimacy of your project so if you don't know anything and you are just you know uh, adding it in your resume it's uh, it's not recommended because in uh, in an interview you will you will be like cross questioned and you you can get caught first thing uh, second thing i feel is uh, people uh, they add uh, things like microsoft word and then you know using microsoft office as a skill set please don't do that at all that is not a technical skill <laughs> and uh, yeah so uh, just learn some uh, you know your c++ your programming languages your development uh, like any development domain anything learn that and then add it but it is recommended to do one project or the other for adding it and it should not be your simple uh, project that can be found easily on the internet so uh, i feel like these are some do's and don'ts like there is not much to add uh, and you know just stick to uh, whatever you are doing like prepare uh, very well for your uh, uh, dsa or dss skills uh, you know just make your lead code profile or code forces or code, uh, like code chef profile very good and i feel that it will do the trick great great i hope this uh, amazing the interaction will help a lot of people to know more about these companies and a lot of learning experience they are going through uh into experiences coming on to the concluding part of a uh, conversation like i would like to have one final piece of advice from you uh, for the audience that are aiming at cracking such tech companies uh so i would like to say that first of all everyone has their own timeline and please don't be pressured into coding only because everyone is doing so i see first year students saying that they are late to late into coding and their, and their uh, friends know so many multiple uh, like languages frameworks and it's it's the hard thing to be honest because there are great career options with amazing packages that you can explore it's all a matter of exploring and researching and this is the time to make mistakes and uh, because you have enough time to learn from them and just find what excites you and pursue it yeah great 
great so so much shreya once again for coming in your experience i hope it will be uh, really a great learning experience for everybody who is listening thank you so much once again thank you ash for inviting me it was a real pleasure i hope you people like this conversation and you had some really good insights into how the interview sessions at different companies of the world like google india bloomberg london intuit amazon uh, and a lot of other companies have been so this had really given you some cool insights ki how you should apply and prepare for these companies thank you so much once again for uh, watching this video till the end and let me know in the comment section if you have any feedbacks for me also do share it with your friends and subscribe the channel thank you all the best good luck bye bye